Welcome back guys, it's Ed from Off The Trails Outdoors. Today, I'm gonna to put the finishing touches on this shipping container kiln. I got two improvements to do today, and I'm also going to finally show you how I'm gonna heat this thing efficiently, so stay tuned. So first, went to Home Depot this morning, picked up some flooring and some styrofoam insulation. I'm gonna finally insulate my kiln floor in the shipping container and add a vapor barrier. Next, I have this exhaust fan. It's a 14 inch uh, from Viver. Uh, plug it in and this will push um, any moisture and any uh, air I want out. So this is gonna be a big upgrade for the kiln and I'll have this powered uh, by my solar panel here. So I got a lot of exciting stuff happening here, so you're gonna have to stay tuned. If you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It would surely help the channel out tremendously. Let's get working. Okay, first I'm gonna tackle the insulation of this floor. I'm going to uh, rip down some two by fours and lay them on their sides um, because that's the width of my styrofoam. It's inch and a half, and these two by fours are inch and a half. So I'm gonna rip these in half and I'm gonna start laying out my studs uh, for my flooring. So today I am being powered by the EcoFlow Delta II, and I also purchased the extra battery. I do have this hooked up to the solar panels. It's not pulling in a lot of energy right now because it's overcast, but I do have a 400 watt solar panel that is attached to my roof of the shipping container, as you can see. So once I get this up and running, my plan is to have all the electrical components run off of solar. So, pretty cool. Okay, so I am going to, like you see now, put the studs on top. Um, I'm gonna run some on uh, some studs on the outsides and then run my joists like that so that way we can uh, have a spot for the insulation and then the flooring and make sure the floor is pretty stable. my two by fours are down now it's time to fill it with styrofoam insulation once I do that I'll lay down a plastic vapor barrier and then my OSB flooring
Okay, we're back. Uh, I had a brief uh, rain delay. It was pouring there, so I put everything away real quick. So I'm gonna get back to cutting foam and putting it on the floor. Okay, I'm going to take some of this uh, spray foam crack, gaps and cracks and uh, fill in some of the uh, spots where there's a little bit of space. Okay, time to lay the vapor berry down. Okay, bringing in some tongue and groove plywood. Okay, it is the next day. I did run out of plastic and it was raining yesterday, so I kind of called it quits. So I got halfway done. I got my other piece of uh, flooring cut. And then my last one, I'm gonna need to cut uh, length and width to get it to fit. So before I lay this, I'm gonna lay some four mil uh, plastic vapor barrier down. So I did throw a double layer on here. I had the extra plastic, so I might as well. Floor's all done. So I did cut out a template for my uh, exhaust fan here. So I'll be using this plywood to mark the shipping container so I know exactly where to cut and my cut is precise.
Next, we'll tear into this wall, get this lined up, and then we'll get my fan uh, framed in. So I did pull back the OSB there to expose the foam. I'm gonna go on the other side, drill a couple holes, come back, cut the foam, and then we'll be ready to go put the fan in. Okay, I was able to install that. So I'll show you what the inside looks like. I've got to clean up the outside. I just simply bolted it right to the uh, container itself. I do have some caulking I'll put on the outside and some flex seal. So that's how it looks like on the inside. I'm gonna come back in with some spray foam and some uh, caulking as well. And I will then uh, cover this up with insulation and then OSB and we should be good to go. Use some Phil Max uh, to fill in the top gaps. Okay, my fan is installed. I've got my cord and my thermostat hanging in here. So I'll be able to hook this up to either electric or my batteries run by solar power. Once the foam dries around my exhaust hood, I will take a, a utility knife and kind of neatly cut around it. Then I will caulk it with some Gorilla caulk. Okay, I'm going to make an attempt to use this Viver uh, diesel heater to try to heat this. Uh, container up. So we're going to see if we can get it to work here. So I'll get into more detail with this heater and to see if it works. So my next step, once I know this works, I do have the exhaust just mounting out the hole in the container right now. This is kind of like a nice flush mount I'll be able to screw into the container and that way I can just hook my hose onto this. So we're going to kind of see how this works. So this is what it looks like from the inside. I did cut in a hole right through my insulation there. I can already feel air coming through, but it's gonna take a little bit to get hot. So this right here is the exhaust. It'll get very, very hot. That's why it's got this sleeve on it. This is the fresh air intake. And as you can hear, it's kind of firing up right now. And I'm gonna see how hot I can get it inside the container. 
Okay, right now I have it at 56 degrees. It is 355, so I'm going to time this in an hour to see exactly how fast and how hot I can get this container. So I'm gonna set this right here in the middle. It says 56 at 355. So I do have it running on high. It looks like there's six settings and it's been running seven minutes. So I'll be able to monitor the inside of the kiln through a GoV temperature sensor. So right now we're at 58 degrees at 358. So I will check back with you here soon. Okay, 63 degrees at 359. Okay, my uh, diesel heater has been going for about two hours. This is the uh, exhaust for it. Um, it kind of sounds like a dryer. Uh, if you put your hand up to it, it's very, very hot. So I'm going to check my temperature in the kiln. Okay, after two hours, we are at 89.6 degrees. So that's where this video will end. So I'm gonna run some tasks to see how long this diesel heater will last on a full uh, tank of fuel and how high I can get my temperature. I'm shooting for around 120 degrees and we're gonna see if I can get that with this setup. That's all I have for you today, guys. I appreciate the support with the channel. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. I will see you on the next video.